Hi, hello everybody. I am so busy and so behind with everything. Tomorrow morning I go to Iceland and I haven't really got any, well, I've, yeah, I've not got enough content to keep me going until I'm back from Iceland with lots of fresh new Icelandic content. So I've put out a, um, an Instagram story uh, asking people to submit questions for a QA. and a uh, Thank you so much to everybody who submitted those questions. I've had so, so much of a response. Obviously, I can't answer them all, but I've chosen some that I think will answer appeal to a broad range of people. You know, this light's not great, is it? Man, I think that's better. Is that better? Yeah, okay. So lots of questions. Thank you so much. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this channel. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you new website, go squarespace.com forward slash Heaton. Right, we're going to just get straight into this. No mess around because I need to pack and I've got loads of stuff to do. I'm going to try and answer all these questions shortly, sharply. Go on to the next one. And yeah, give information and stuff like that. Okay, so, so first question. Any chance of seeing you in downtown Reykjavik? And that is from at Jerem Design or Jerem Design. Um, so, no, probably not, uh, because when I'm in Reykjavik, I'll be working I'll be with the group and the clients because it's a workshop, um, so I'll be incredibly busy and I'll be working with them, so any any chance of me like leaving them to go for a beer to meet people and say hello is absolutely not going to happen. All of my attention will be with the group. Um, if I was there on a pleasure trip, yeah, go for a beer. What are your hobbies outside of photography and can you pet your dog for me? Um, right, cnz dot photo. Hang on. All right, here he is, the boy wonder, the boy wonder who never makes it onto my shoots because he's a little rascal. Uh, you want to say hello? Hello, hello, hello. There he is. Oh. All right, that'll do. That'll do. Thank you, Monty. Thank you. What are my hobbies outside of photography? Yeah, I don't just do photography because you know you can burn out, you need distractions from everything in life. Uh, I enjoy mountain biking and I enjoy rock climbing, lead climbing, sport climbing and bouldering. So that's pretty much it, that's pretty much all I do. Um, yeah, and I like to go walking and hiking and stuff, and anything outdoorsy. Okay, question here from at Ellie Kate with an underscore each side. And um, how did you become so successful and so well known? Well, Ellie, I have no idea. No idea. I think the popularity of this channel just seemed to, to increase more and more. I think I got onto YouTube um, at the right time when it wasn't massively popular, so there was not much uh, competition, even though I don't really see other channels as competition because there's, you know. There's, there's no infinite number of videos you can watch, no finite number of videos you can watch, should I say. Um, so yeah, I think I just got on at the right time when there wasn't much of a market, so I attracted a good number of people. I, I personally, I don't know, I, I make sure that I'm always open and honest and that I'm myself and hope that that re resonates with the audience. Um, and I just, I really work hard as, as much as I can. Um, and. I don't know, seems to be working anyway, but no, I don't really have an answer for that, I'm afraid. So, Eamon Musney wants to know how I make money through landscape photography and travelling. Um, so, yeah, um, making money through landscape photography is, the, the, the trick is not to rely on one source of income. I have many, many sources, you know, many small sources of income that all add up to a wage, which means I'm able to make a living. So you know, ad revenue from these uh, videos, sponsorship money from, you know, the likes of this video, affiliate links, you know, if, if you look in the description of all of my videos, you can see the little bits and pieces of gear that I buy and that I use. Those are affiliate links, I get a small commission from those. I get paid to do public speaking um, and lectures. I, I run workshops. Um, what else do I do? Uh, oh, I sell prints and of course my calendar. I'd, I'd say my calendar makes up a large portion of my annual income, if you like. So any one of those things alone isn't enough to live off. No way. But you put them together and you have... That's how I make money, I suppose. And eh, I'm not going to lie, it all comes down to this channel, my popularity. You know, if you have an audience, it's much easier to uh, make a living. Um, so yeah. 
that's that's how I do it. Jacob Medina says, Thomas, what was your first landscape photo? This photo. This was my. I think this was this was definitely the the earliest landscape photograph that I have, um, and this was taken a long time ago on Blackpool Beach. Um, and yeah, I think I was a, what caught my eye here was the open space, the 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 sort of reflections in the sand. I mean, it's a terrible photograph. This actually, this image you're looking at now is a scan of a print that my dad made, probably 12 or 13 or 14 years ago. <laughs> so, quite a long time ago, but this is the earliest landscape photograph that I have, and yeah, it's pretty terrible, overexposed. Yeah, but there's something about it I quite like. So, I've got a bit of a deep question here from Jay Windows or Windows. Um, I want to be a landscape photographer when I leave school, but my parents say it's too risky. Uh, Jay, I think your parents are right. Um, it's incredibly risky to just think that you can go straight from school into a full-time professional landscape photographer. I don't think it works like that anymore, really. I think um, most... Ah, I'm speculating here, but most landscape photographers, including myself, start off as hobbyists. They become successful and known in their field. It's a very, 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 very slow process. So it'd be so irresponsible of me to tell you to go for your dream and just nail it. it it's life, life isn't like that. There are lots of entrepreneurs who'll tell you otherwise, but you know, you never, you know, you only ever see the self-help, self-help books from people who've made it. You never see the books from people who haven't made it. And if you did, there would be a hell of a lot more books from those people than the successful people. So, it's, I'd love to tell you that it's, you know, go for it and if you work hard, you can achieve anything. It's not really the case. I think do, uh, get some good education, I don't know, do, do specialise in something that, that you can fall back on, something you enjoy. I, I, don't, I have no idea what that could be, but something useful and practical. Um, but always practice landscape photography as a hobby, hobby, and you're passionate enough about it, and you, you enjoy it enough, and you practice it enough, you know, that you might start to see your popularity increase, and opportunities will open up, and you take those opportunities, and the next one, and the next one, and slowly but surely, you might just be able to carve out a living, and then if you get to that stage, you're really brave, and you can go for it full time. That's exactly what I did. Um, so, yeah, probably listen to your parents, sorry. Charlie Maurer asks, um, when is the 2019 calendar coming out? So every year I release a landscape photography calendar of some of my best images from sort of the previous year or there or thereabouts. Um, so I'll probably get my calendar put together and printed usually in about August. And then late August, early September, I'll send out a newsletter for pre-orders. All of the pre-orders um, basically they get a signature on the calendar. I sign all of the pre-orders. Um, and then I'll probably do a pre-order shout out on this channel. And then once pre-orders end, which is usually sort of mid-September, so only pre-orders for a couple of weeks, then the calendars sort of go in general sale. So yeah, August, late August, early September. This is a question from at Drummer Plumber, a very cool name. Uh, will you be sleeping through the day in Iceland? Yes, yeah, so as I said, I'm going to Iceland tomorrow. It's midnight sun, so 24 hour daylight. If you go into landscape photography, sorry, if you go into Iceland for landscape photography in the summertime, um, you have to flip your routine. All of the good light is from 9, 10 o'clock at night till 2, 3, 4 in the morning. So you sleep during the day, you work at night, and you get beautiful light all through the midnight hours. It's fantastic. Hey, you've got a, got a question here from Intrepid Camera Company. Hello, Intrepid. Hello. Um, how are you getting on with your 4 or 5? <laughs> All right, so yeah, I have a 4-5 film camera, large format, um, and I haven't used it for a while. And the reason for that is, it, it always seems like I'm pushed for time, like now. Um, for example, I'm rushing through this video, I've got, I've, you know, it's 20 past 3, I've got to pack and I've got to go out soon. It's just... So, film needs to be done slowly and a few things need to fall into place, like you need calm weather, a good subject. I also, you know, need time to process the film and scan it if it's going into a video. You know, at the minute I'm either shooting abroad, so I can't take the film camera abroad, or I certainly wouldn't want to, um, or I'm like going out and shooting videos and doing photography that are going to be uploaded in the next few days or the next week, so then I think, well, I haven't got time to shoot film and process it. And What I need to do is I need to get on top of my workload, sort out my work-life balance, 
you know, get a good number of videos in the can so that I'm not constantly chasing those uploads. And then when I'm calm and I've got free time, then I will enjoy film. Um, and yeah, I'm disappointed in myself that I'm not shooting more film, but I, I have all the best intentions. I've got a fridge full of film stock. Um, I just, I just need to stop making excuses, sort out my work-life balance, and then we're good to go. This is from Zoe Pez. Uh, Zoe underscore Pez. Do you ever get lonely? I love traveling in nature, but worry about the loneliness or worry that the loneliness would be too hard. So I think I mentioned this a couple of videos ago that you know, landscape photography can be lonely. And it's not always, don't get me wrong. I think it's all to do with state of mind. And um, so sometimes I really, really enjoy and appreciate the solitude and I embrace it. Um, and in fact, Ben Horn has just done a video on this. He's just dropped his video now, I haven't watched it yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick his video at the end of this video and I'll bet you he answers your question, Zoe. For me, loneliness really actually makes, it doesn't make sense, but loneliness comes in when I'm in a busy situation. So I used to shoot wedding photography, right, years and years ago. Um, and if I was at a wedding with 200 people and I'm sat there on my own, um, that felt lonely. Whereas when I'm in the mountains by myself, uh, most of the time it doesn't feel lonely, I appreciate the solitude, but usually when things are going wrong and I'm tired, I think lack of sleep as well can cause depression, negative feelings, anxiety and loneliness. So for me it's about managing sleep, making sure things go well, and if I'm, I'm well rested and things are going great then I don't feel lonely. Um, I feel like I waffled on a bit there Zoe, but you know I hope you... Uh, <laughs> I hope I sort of answered your question. It's getting on a bit now, guys, so I'm just gonna do one last question. Thank you for sticking with me. Um, tips on passive, ooh, good question. This is from Daniel Luther, Wedding Storyteller. Um, tips on passive income as a photographer. So passive income as a photographer, probably the easiest way to make passive income, and it won't be much, uh, but it you know could grow and give you more, is to create a blog. So. Daniel, I'm guessing your wedding story, your wedding photographer, right? Uh, create a wedding blog. Um, create interesting blogs, one or two a week, all manner of things. Remember to add value to whoever's reading that blog. So give them tips, advice, and stuff like that. And within that blog, um, create a Google Ad, or AdSense account. Um, and you can just drop little Google ads in, in the blog. People hardly even notice they're there. A little, little thing at the side here and here or something at the bottom. Um, and as well as that, you could uh, put affiliate links in your blog. So you could say, I shot a wedding and I use this camera. It was perfect. This is my wedding camera. Here's a link if you want to learn more. And that's an affiliate link. People might click on that and buy something. Or you have to tell them it's an affiliate link though. That's, that's the law. Um, and what else can you do? You can create an ebook. So you have a blog, you get people going and reading your blog, little adverts, little affiliate links and then drop an ebook, price it at like two quid or something like that, dead cheap, and it could be like, you know, wedding photography poses, wedding photography tips, lighting for wedding photography, how to deal with awkward clients and wedding, I don't know, whatever. You could do a wedding photography ebook, it's free, it's easy to make, and you can sell that within your blog, and then all of this might amount to, you know, a bit of money every month. It won't be huge, you'll not be able to live off it, but it might pay for some new gear, and it'll be passive income, you know, because blogs last forever and people always go to them if they're good enough. All right, Whew. so I think I'm done. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm so sorry to all those people who asked questions that I didn't answer, um, but you know, this is dragging on a bit and well, this would be hours long if I'd have answered all the questions. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, Squarespace, they're the website and you make your website through their website so drag and drop templates and stuff it really is very good for photographers um, so if you do need a website go to squarespace.com forward slash heaton and uh, tr try start the free trial and if you like the free trial use the off code heaton for 10 percent off your first purchase right i i have got to pack my sh and go to iceland um, because i am running late um yeah all right until next time bye for now